it's Thursday night, so it's John Giles. Evening, John. Evening, Adrian. Great to chat with you. It's uh, been a been an interesting World Cup to watch so far. A nice mix of one-off results. Uh, some a couple of upsets, of course, in the last sixteen. Enjoyable World Cup for you so far on the pitch. I think it's been very, very good, Adrian. You know, there's a lot of controversy about the uh, where it was held, but the actual games themselves uh, and and the the new countries, as I would call them, or the less countries. Uh, not less countries, uh, uh, <clears throat> have been terrific. Mm. You know, uh, Morocco, uh, loads, of, loads of new clubs coming into it, playing extremely well, uh, and, and, and they've made it. Senegal, uh, a lot of the, 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 the countries that we would call Japan, particularly. Yeah, Cameroon, yeah. Uh, Cameroon are very, very good. Mm. They've made it a great World Cup, and it's, it's, been, it's been well set up, Adrian, now. What uh, before we get into the games? What, are you watching on ITV? There, are you enjoying the punditry? Um, yeah, it's okay. It's uh, it, it changes from from time to time. There's different ones. BBC come on, but um, it's been okay. Yeah, yeah. Nothing. That's that's. Uh, I'll take that as the. Uh, you're not you're not going to damn them with uh, with praise there, John. Anyway. Uh, well, I, 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 if, I, if I feel that they need praise, I'll give it. But uh, uh, some I like, some I don't like. To be honest. Obviously on the eve of the game, so uh, we've Croatia, Brazil uh, getting things underway tomorrow at three o'clock. Uh, Netherlands, Argentina after that, and then on Saturday obviously move on to Morocco, Portugal, and then I think maybe what we're kind of considering the big one here then England, France obviously after that. So, um, which of those four are you looking forward to most? Um, well, Brazil have the big names in there. Mm. Um, I thought they were showing off a little bit too much the other night. Um, Did you? Yeah, because we've been talking about that a bit on the show, yeah. Sorry? We've been talking a bit about the celebrations, yeah. Yeah, well, the celebrations are one thing, but it's just even the way they play it at times, you know. It was as if they were going out to show off uh, how good they were rather than getting on with the game and, and getting it done. Well, they did get it done in the end. They won well in the end. They were too good, far too good for South Korea, uh, who, who I think the occasion was too much for them. Um, but as, as, we, as we saw from Brazil... A lot of good players, Adrian. Mm. You know, but I think they were overdoing the show, the showboat, a little bit too much. You mean you don't mean the dancing so much as actually during the game? Oh, during the game, yeah, I don't mind the dancing too much. That's when the goal is scored. It can be overdone. But I thought during the game they were they were showing off a little bit too much instead of getting on with the get getting on with the job. You know? Yeah. Um, t- talk to us then a bit about let's go jump in there Croatia Brazil and like obviously so much talk about a 37 year old that we will talk about maybe in a minute but uh, there's another one in the shape of Luka Modric for Croatia quietly going about his business couple of man of the match awards um, you know overall though for Croatia John like the, maybe the only issue that they, they uh, despite his genius they can't score goals which could be a problem against Brazil I, I think they've done well to get to where they are Croatia and as you said there, Adrian, mainly because of Modric. You know, he's a joy to watch. He's, I think he's 36, 37 now. And he's still the best uh, midfield player I've seen uh, in this competition. But I think Brazil will be too much for them. Mm. It, and it's hard to know exactly with Brazil. Are they yeah, the true picture of them? Are they the, the team that beat Korea? Are they still growing into the tournament? Have they hit their peak? There's obviously the quarterfinals is, is a time where we start to get the true personality of where these teams are at, I suspect. Yeah. Well, we know that we know they have uh, terrific players. There's no doubt about it. We've got Neymar back in again, the team. Missed the first couple of matches. Uh, and he can, he, he can be anything, uh, Adrian. You know, he can be absolutely brilliant. We've seen him before. Especially if they're on top, he's very, very good. Um, but, but uh, you know, generally speaking, they, 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 they come, they should come good. You know, Rick Arlinson is a different player altogether to the player I saw at Everton. Uh, he's come on, he's, he's come on since he's gone to Spurs. Um, he's, he's been, he's been a new, a new man from what I can see, and uh, you know, he, he's, he's, he's been excellent uh, for Brazil. Yeah. And Phoenicius, Phoenicius is it? Phoenicius Jr. Phoenicius Jr. Yeah, you know they're they're three really really top class players. Um, I can I, I I can see them being too good for Croatia. I'll be surprised if they don't, Adrian. Yeah. You know the players that they have, best goalkeeper, one of the best goalkeepers in the world. Uh, you know central defenders. They, they 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 have all the all the all the players. I think. Um, so it's just how they play on the day, like most teams, how they play on the day. 
but I think they'll be far too good for Croatia. The, the, and it could could set up a, a Brazil Argentina semi final, which would be a, which would be a treat for all of us neutrals. The Netherlands Argentina game, um, obviously two different styles to a degree here. And, and in in Netherlands, you have a team that um, you know don't tend to maybe hold on to the ball too much. Does that become a, a bigger factor, John? Almost the deeper they go, that like when you start to run into the better sides, maybe like in Argentina, that they have the ability to punish you a little bit more when uh, when they have so much possession. Yeah, well, Netherlands have, have have been getting some stick. Apparently, the manager's been getting some stick, and from the from the the uh, newspaper guys over there. But they've done well, you know. The the I didn't think they played particularly well against the USA. Um, you know, they they got two goals before half time, but they they wouldn't uh, they wouldn't be on top of my list. They've done well to to get where they were. I'd be surprised surprised if Argentina uh, don't beat them, uh, Adrian. Right. Although they haven't been, I don't, you know, I think they're living on Messi. Messi has done his stuff in this match. Um, you know, he, he scored against the Aussies, but uh, they didn't play particularly well against Australia. And I think without Messi, despite the age he's at, uh, I think they'd be very ordinary. But with mm-hmm. Messi in the team, anything could happen. Um, so I would, um, I would say they, they, they would get through. I suspect against you, the Netherlands, Argentina, yeah. Yeah, I suspect you've been a, a fan of uh, Frankie de Jong in that, or at least what he's doing at the World Cup in that that Holland midfield uh, Barcelona player who, even in the last twenty four hours, has started and look at which uh, pl- decent player hasn't been linked with Manchester United at any point over the last <laughs> number of years. But again, those links have uh, has uh, cropped up. But what he's been doing in that playmaker role, controlling a game, looks very much at home at that level. Well, he does. Well, he's. I think he's been a good player for for a good while, Adrian. You know. But um, but they, they certainly they, they didn't really impress me against the uh, USA. Mm. But they won. They won well in the end. In the end, they won well. Yeah. What are your What are your thoughts on Van Gaal? He's uh, he's certainly interesting for um, for us in the media, John, in his uh, press conferences, and he was at it again today. But there's an element of him that seems almost liberated to a degree, potentially by the illness that he's had and coming through that, and potentially, of course, by the fact that it's a last crack at it for him. He he gives up the gig after this tournament, no matter what happens. Well, he's been a great football man over the years, uh, Adrian, as we know. And I think what happened, even I think he wasn't popular with the press when this competition started. Uh, actually, he turned on him a few times because they were they were winning matches, but they weren't happy with the way he played. Uh, and, and, and he gave as good as he got uh, to the newspaper guys. But obviously now, with what he's done, uh, he, he might have won them over. You know, to, to get to get now uh, into the position that they're in, um, you know, nobody. I think nobody from his own homeland fancied him to do anything. They were onto him from the start, uh, and he's, he's he's got he's done well. He's got through. Uh, he can't do any more than that. And but I don't, I don't think that the, the the Holland Times of previous years, to be quite honest. Um, really, yeah. I, I think which Argentina are not great, but I think Argentina will do them. He like uh, it's interesting you make the point about the like the Dutch teams gone by. He one thing he seems to have done is like bonded the egos almost. You know, like the Dutch teams were almost famous for that split in the dressing room type stuff. Which it seems yeah. on the outside looking in anyway that this time around that's not the case. They're all seemingly on the same yeah. page. Yeah, I, I I think he's a very very strict manager coach. There's no doubt about that. I mean, he's had a great record in in in, in his in his career, um, but you know. It was his own press people that were turning against him, uh, giving him a plenty of stick early on. Mm. And um, he's done well to get through. I don't think they fancied him to get through. Uh, and he's done it. You know, he's, 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 he's an experienced football man. There's no doubt about that. Do you think the, because uh, you touched on it earlier on, just the, the narrow like win over Australia that could have easily been a draw, the chances that Australia created late, uh, late on, and the Saudi loss. Are you seeing those as major red flags when it comes to Argentina, John, or that there's still a possibility that you know they're a young team sort of working their way into the tournament? Uh, I haven't been impressed with them. I know they got a terrible shock early on, uh, uh, Adrian, and then they came through a bit. Mm. Um, but even against the Aussies, you know, the, the Aussies are well, well able to look after themselves, had a good job at it. But if it wasn't for Messi, um, I don't think they would have got through in, in some of the matches. And he's not the Messi of all, to be honest, Edwin. He, he has to preserve his, his, his energy. He's not, he's not as busy as he used to be. Still brilliant. I mean, every time he gets the ball, even the goal he scored, uh, he's, he's, 
he's a genius, but but he's he's um I don't think he's the messy he was a few years ago. You know why should he be? Uh, he, he's, he's he's brilliant. He's one of the greatest players ever played. Um, but he's carrying them along himself even at the moment. I, I think Argentina are not don't have young players coming through to really help them the way they should be helping them. So it's all down to him. Yeah. But you're 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 leaning Argentina by the sounds of it, John. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I think they have I think they'll have enough to do the Netherlands. I presume you're leaning Portugal against Morocco. Um or are you three o'clock well, on yeah, I think I, I think I would go with Portugal because they've got so many so very, very, very good players. But this won't be any walkover, Adrian. Mm. Morocco were, were, were brilliant. Uh, who did they play the last time? They, 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 they beat Spain. Uh, beat Spain, exactly. Uh, and they were really, really good. And that, th- this is not going to be any easy match. Anybody playing against Mor- get this, this, this uh, Morocco are not going to get it easy. Not by a long way. And I, I fancy Portugal to win, but just to get through. But this, this is going to be a really, really hard match for Portugal. Yeah. They, um, obviously, the, the, uh, we touched, uh, touched on it earlier on, but uh, Ronaldo and the um, sort of stink that he leaves in his trail everywhere, he seems like he goes at the minute. And another manager now, John, who has, a, who has an issue with him, they've had to come out today and uh, issue some sort of a release to say that um, there's no split in the camp. He was, there was a report saying that he had threatened to walk out on them, uh, but they're, they're all saying now Ronaldo and, and uh, the team are saying no, that, that wasn't the case. But regardless, another manager who has a, uh, an issue with him, John, he seems to be... Uh, raging against uh, the dying of the light in a big way here as his career seemingly winds down. Yeah, I think there's no doubt about that, uh, Adrian. And I, I, I feel a bit sorry for him, to be honest. Uh, you know, Ronaldo's been a great player. And he's, 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 what, what made him great was part of being as selfish as he was. You know, I, 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 looking at his career, he's been one of the great players of all time. There's no doubt about that. But one of the things that made him great w- was his own selfishness because he was a goal scorer. He was only interested in one thing, and that was scoring goals. Now, it's the most important thing in football, scoring goals. I don't think he was ever a team man. And now that he's, he's like a lot of players who, who, who get older, they don't see it themselves. And uh, I think he believes, he, no, I can still do it, I can still do it. Uh, whereas the manager who has been with him for years had to make a big decision, a really big decision, because he wasn't really doing, doing the job for him like he could. And that was Fernando Santos, wasn't he? Mm. Now, he's fallen out with him, but I think anybody that leaves him out of the team, like at Manchester United, he's going to fall out with him, because he believes that he's the Ronaldo of old and he can still do it. Now, the managers have to take a, a hard line, and I'm sure it was a very hard line uh, for Mr. Santos to say, "Sorry, but I'm not. I'm not playing you." It, it's in your experience, John. I've been around football for a long time, and including your own career, it's hard to know. I guess when the the time is right to hop, you probably don't want to hear it. I guess. Um, I think that's that's absolutely true. In in my experience on it, you know, like I, I played at, at Leeds United with a player called Bobby Collins. You might, you might never remember Bobby. Bobby Collins was a great Scottish player. He played for Celtic. He went to Everton. He came to Leeds, and he was the, the, he was the leader in the, the Leeds getting to where they were. Uh, but I think he was 36 or something seven at Leeds. He got an injury, came back, and Don left him out of the team. Mm-hmm. Actually, I more or less took his place, and he was one of the great players. And Bobby couldn't take it at all. And that, you find that with great players, they think they can still do it. Uh, I, I was looking you know, for now. Uh, I'm not putting myself in with those players, but when I was coming to the end, I got an injury, uh, Adrian, mm. which 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 really put me out of it. And were you, I was, were I you thinking I was about it, John? Thirty-eight was at that time. You know, I, I was playing, and and I, I thought, well, yeah, I was. I, I think I was okay until I got the injury. But now, I, I, and I was, I was, I was player manager, so I, I was going on my own. I, I I couldn't. I didn't leave myself out of the team. Mm. Hopefully, I think I was okay. I think I got an injury, and that, and that finished me. So, it, 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 in other words, I, I don't think I went on longer than I should should have done. Yeah, we have only a couple of minutes, so I better ask you about England, France, and your sense of. Uh, I mean, it looks like England are the underdogs here. So much chat about Mbappe. What is your expectation out of that one? Oh, I, I, it's 
a hard one to call. Um, it really, it really is a hard one to call. You know, Mbappe. I might go for France mainly because they have Griezmann playing in the middle of the field, and he's playing really, really well. And I think he'll be able to supply Mbappe to to, to produce his stuff. Uh, you know, the big talk at the moment is Jude Bellingham. Uh, I think he's, he's only 19. He's a terrific prospect, uh, but he's he's not a wizard midfield player yet. You know, where is he short, not, John? What are you, what are you, where are you thinking? Sorry, where is he short? What would you like to see him develop? Uh, at? Positional sense, right? You, have, you very hel- seldom hear anybody talking about positional sense. But positional sense is as a midfield player, partic- particularly to get into the positions in the middle of the field where you can dictate the game. In other words, get, have the ball come to you. And instead of waiting in the one spot, waiting for the ball to come to you, you make the ball come to you. Now, am I making sense, Adrian? Yeah. Right? In other words, positional sense is getting in a position in the middle of the field because that's where the play is really dictated from, in my opinion. So say the left back is on, is, is on the ball. You have to get into a position where it's obvious he gives it to you as the midfield player, and, and mostly occasions like that, to di- dictate the play uh, from that position, right? Mm. Now, this lad is only 19, but the matches I've seen him in, some of his positional sense has been dreadful. But when right. he does get the ball, he's very good, right? So the ball comes to him. He doesn't make the ball come to him. Uh, but he's only 19, uh, but he has, he has the basic stuff to do it, with positional sense, you'd never hear anybody very hear anybody talking about it. Is is in my opinion the most important thing for a midfield player to be in a position where you can get the ball and receive the ball all the time. Bellingham can't do that at the moment, yeah. but he's very good when he gets the ball in a position. But Griezmann is a genuine midfield player that I've seen him playing for France, and he could dictate the game. If he can if he dictates the game, England are going to be in trouble. Yeah. All right. Well, that was definitely a point, John. I hadn't heard it anywhere else, so we'll be keeping an eye out for it on uh, Saturday evening. Thanks a million. Pleasure as always. Thanks, Adrian. Thanks a lot, John Giles, there on Thursday evening. Football on Off the Ball brought to you by Sky. All the football you love in one place across Sky Sports, BT Sport, and Premier Sports. Back after these. Football on Off the Ball with Sky. Proud partner and supporter of the Republic of Ireland women's national football team. This is News Talk.